Hello, Dr. Bijari. Uh, can you please tell me uh, what is pacemaker? And you know, some people just uh, you do some pacemaker for, as part of their treatment. Yeah. So, um, pacemaker is uh, something that is implanted in the body to help pace the heart. So, for example, our heart has a natural pacemaker, which okay. is a uh, in the sinus node. So the heart has a regular pace. Oh, it's like a rhythm of uh, the absolutely. Heart. Okay. So. Um, so when I'm sitting down, my heart is beating at Seven. 60 beats a minute, let's okay. say. So it's beating like that. And then when I get up and start moving, this beat gets faster. Okay. And when I'm running, it gets even faster. So, and when I'm sleeping, it gets slower. So that, the, so the heart has a natural pacemaker. Okay. Now, some patients will have uh, either their pacing function of the heart is abnormal. That means they're not having that normal beat or the conduction from the top chamber to the bottom chamber of the heart is not well. Okay. So that means that they may have long pauses in their heartbeat. Okay. And this can cause symptoms. That means they can get lightheaded. They can get, uh, they can sometimes even lose consciousness. Okay. They, they may feel very tired doing ordinary things like climbing up a flight of stairs they may feel very tired and weak so as we get older these things can tend to get common so okay. usually when you go see a cardiologist they assess your heart in an EKG if there is an abnormality or in a monitor that you wore if there is an abnormality then they may say that hey this problem that you have can be fixed by a pacemaker okay. so Usually it is implanted on the left side of the chest. Is it outside or? No, it is implanted inside. You inside. won't be, you'll be able to feel it that there is something there. Okay. But it's implanted in, inside the body. So the way it's done is uh, the pacemaker itself is, is very small. Nowadays the pacemakers are very small. Um, and uh, nowadays almost all pacemakers have two wires that go into the heart. It doesn't necessarily have to have two, but tradition and now most pacemakers place at least two wires so the pacemaker sits here and then these wires go from the pacemaker all the way to the top of the heart to the right atrium one wire the second wire will go from the pacemaker to the right ventricle so and then this pacemaker will regulate your heart rhythm so for example let's say that I'm having a heartbeat like this and I skip beats Okay, so I'm having one beat, two beat, and third, fourth beat I skip. But what the pacemaker will do at that time, if I have a pacemaker, is it will it'll see that I have my own heartbeat, the first beat. So pacemaker will do nothing. It'll watch and wait. It'll sense. Second beat, it looks for a second beat. And if it sees a second beat, it does nothing. It senses that and says, yes, I see a heartbeat, I will do nothing. But then it senses and after the second beat, let's say I don't have another heartbeat then the pacemaker will say okay there is no heartbeat yet and the pacemaker will fire a small beat to help the heart beat okay and so it's kind of like electricity just really small yeah sort of and the patients won't feel this at all okay okay so so sometimes some people are called pacemaker dependent pacemaker dependent means that without the pacemaker these Their patients not be. cannot have a meaningful heartbeat that means it's usually less than 40 beats a minute or sometimes they don't conduct at all okay mm -hmm. so that's pacemaker dependent some people are not pacemaker dependent that means that without the pacemaker they won't die or anything like that but they will their quality of life will be very uh, difficult so the pacemaker will help them so that they can climb a flight of stairs if they want to and the heart will increase the pacemaker will help them increase the heart rate so they can go for a walk in the mall if they want to okay. so that the pacemaker will help them things like that that way doing normal things won't get them to have symptoms of lightheadedness super fatigue and tiredness and things like that so let me let me ask you this like how long is uh, so how long the val the validity of this pacemaker so like, yeah so there is a you're implanting something inside your body right, right. so Remember I said, so the pacemaker is a small little box like thing, okay, that sits here with two wires in the heart. Now it has a battery pack. So usually, it, it, depending on the usage of the person, uh, it can last from eight years 
to 10 years or 12 years, depending oh, on the battery. Okay. So let's say a person is using the pacemaker 100% of the time, then the battery will run out faster. Okay. When the battery runs out faster, that battery pack can be changed. So after eight years of use, you go back to see your cardiac electrophysiologist and they will take that battery pack off. They won't take the wires out, the wires will stay. They put a new box in place Okay. and they suture back in and that will last them for another eight to ten years okay so uh, that's what a pacemaker is now there's another thing that's similar to a pacemaker it's called a defibrillator oh, some patients it also it's the same I mean from, from a patient's perspective it's the same thing that something that's implanted right here uh, it's a little larger than a pacemaker and this thing can also do, do exactly the, the same thing that a pacemaker can do but it also has an extra function, which is that can actually shock your heart also. Okay. So that's a different. Now that is for patients who have had either dangerous arrhythmias or something like that, okay. that have received shocks in the past, or who have gone through a sudden death episode, you know, where their heart stopped for all practical purposes, it fibrillated or something like that, or they have a very weak heart, a heart that could stop for all practical purposes or fibrillate any moment. In those patients, we implant a cardiac defibrillator. Okay. So this one has the ability to function as a pacemaker, but at the same time, it's also watching the heart constantly to look for arrhythmias. If there are any arrhythmias that are meaningful for the patient, this uh, device can shock the heart right away and save the patient's life. So those are the two common, uh, commonly things. So just to go in a little bit more deeper is that traditionally it's placed, uh, placed. I'm sorry, on the left side of the chest. Sometimes it can also be placed on the right side of the chest. Now the new technologies include pacemakers that do not have wires that go inside the heart. There are uh, we call subcutaneous pacemakers, which involve wires on the outside of the heart as well. Okay. okay, that's uh, something that can be done in uh, younger people who don't like to have a wire inside their heart. their heart. And now the newer technology is pacemakers without wires, which is, which are called leadless pacemakers. Uh, that's fairly new. Uh, you know, uh, one company has already uh, put that out in the market now. It's called leadless pacemakers, which is very small and it, it just pl gets placed inside the right ventricle of the heart. Okay. It goes inside the heart. Yeah, and okay. it stays in the heart. It's a leadless pacemaker. Okay. So these are the these are, these are the common things of the, the uh, you know, in regards to a pacemaker. Some people have a third third wire. So, like I said, most of the time it's a one wire in the right atrium and the other wire inside the right ventricle. Some people have an extra wire on the left side of the heart as well to help synchronize the heart. That's what we call it to help the heart beat in synchrony. That's helps their uh, squeeze function of the heart somewhat and things like that. So this is a general overview of uh, what a pacemaker is. Thank you so much for telling us about pacemaker. So we hope this is uh, helpful for the listeners.